The August jobs report a huge disappointment. The number coming in at 235,000 jobs created last month. That was below even the lowest of expectations. The unemployment rate did fall to 5.2%. Mike Lee, your reaction, additional reaction. Yeah, um, this this number is a, a bit of a train wreck, and it's going to put the current administration in, in a bit of a pickle because uh, the only um, the only area where they're really polling well is COVID, and so uh, with with everything that's going on in Afghanistan, this sort of number are they going to continue uh, the fear mongering with uh, the Delta variant and the new variants are going to come uh, because that, that's clearly keeping people out of the workforce, it's keeping people from going out to dinner, uh, which is hurting the leisure and hospitality industry, which we should be seeing hundreds of thousands of jobs being added each month. I mean, I, I think that's where the most mm -hmm. openings are. So it's 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 going to be interesting to see going forward. I think for markets, this is a net positive because I think the Fed is going to continue to print money. Uh, and, and this is a, mm -hmm. uh, a dismal report, but it's the economy is still yeah. expanding and we're likely to continue expanding for a couple right. years. So while we have easy money and expanding economy, great earnings by the largest companies, uh, I think equities are going to continue to trend higher. Probably not not run away higher, but just continue to grind higher like they have the last few months. Ryan? Well, you know, again, we're still, if my math is right, we're five and a half million jobs away from pre-pandemic levels. So what does that tell us, right? This, this job number was disappointing. The Fed is still going to be the tailwind we talked about. But again, what's corporate America telling us, right? That, that things are getting better. I mean, there, there's a lot of sales going on. I and mean, we've seen record earnings. There are some real positives. Guys are up 20% for the year, all right, at the end of <laughs> August. That's only happened a handful of times. And you know what's happened the last couple of times? The rest of the year, back in the mid-90s, we saw this. We saw nearly 10% gains the rest of the year. So I know all the stuff we're talking about today is a disappointment, but the truth of the matter is we are still in a bull market. The Fed is still a tailwind and corporate America is still growing and earnings are growing. So we, uh, we're still pretty optimistic, at least from the investments point of view. Well, the political landscape was altogether different because the Democrats were, well, really on the side of conservatives in some ways in the 90s. Uh, Patrice, <laughs> yeah, I think this jobs report is, uh, it comes at a good time, I think, for President Biden, who is on a staycation this weekend in Delaware. Uh, I think it'll get a couple of headlines today and maybe kind of dissipate over the long weekend. Uh, but, you know, I, I do think that there's some optimism. Uh, it, it may not be captured fully in these numbers. When we look at women and women's labor force participation, it's been kind of weak. It's been on the decline for, for over a decade now. But I'm also seeing and hearing anecdotes from women who are saying either they're starting their own small businesses or they're dropping out of the workforce by choice to be home care, uh, to home uh, caregivers. So I think there's going to be some you know, in the long term when we look at this jobs number. It's bad today, but we've got to take a long, full, full long-term uh, perspective. And I think that there are going to be some structural changes to different demographics in, this, in, the, um, in the labor market that we're starting to see uh, take root. And I think women is one of those areas. Uh, women staying at home because they can't count on the teachers' unions to educate their children for the future yeah. and educate them for the jobs of the future. Joni Bali, a final word from you. Yeah, you know, I just want to say, Patrice makes a great point. I was looking at labor participation for women. It's 57.4% versus men over 20. It's 69.9%. So we definitely have a challenge. And I think this speaks to the, the fact that employers need to think about creative ways to attract women into the workforce. And maybe that is more flexible workforce models, um, job sharing. We've talked about things like that in the past. It might be time to revisit that. We need to get women back in the workforce and participating. And then lastly, Dig, and I'll just say, I don't know how much credit I'm going to give this jobs report. Let's see what the revisions are next month, because I can tell you from the front lines, there's so much opportunity out there. Um, employers are hiring in all industries ac across the board. I think the issue, just again, is that labor participation rate. I I'm going to let Steve Moore, you get 15 seconds, final word. 
Well, look at look at uh, that, that number on construction. I mean, how do you lose 3,000 construction jobs when you've got every single construction site in America is hiring people? I right. mean, you can't get a construction crew anywhere for three months. So it's it's an amazing uh, testament the wrong things we're doing. Final thing I'll just say about this is do worry about inflation. I think yep. it's, a, it's a big problem coming. I think that the wages yeah. are not keeping pace with They're the not, cost of living. Not this and year. And so th that's a big problem for workers. All right. I, I want to thank everybody. Steve Moore, Joni Biley, John Lonsky, Mike Lee, Ryan Detrick, James Freeman, and Patrice Lee Anwuka. I hope I didn't forget anybody. I think I got you all there. Thank you so much.